Today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the Hot Toys Sleepy Hollow Ichabod Crane 1-6 scale collectible figure. This movie masterpiece series is MMS270 and spot picked up from the folks over at Toy NK Toys. I'll provide the link down below if you guys are interested in picking this up for yourself. And of course, it being Halloween right around the corner, I had to have a look at something very cool and one of my favorite movies to watch every Halloween, Sleepy Hollow. The box itself is a pretty cool looking box as we've got the forced scene down below, Ichabod Crane's goggles, as well as the death tree looming be behind. And I guess that is kind of the equivalent of like the moon, but I do like the way that that box looks. As for the back of the box, you've got MMS270 Ichabod Crane 1-6 scale collectible figure. This comes to us from the folks over at, again, at Hot Toys, and it does have a warning choking hazard as small parts not recommended for children under three years of age. An interesting, neat touch to the inside of the box, we've got inserts that you can pop out and add strings to. If you remember the Sleepy Hollow movie, his mother used to entertain young Ichabod by having these two uh, cardboard circles, one with a bird, one with a cage, and she'd spin it, and it would look as if the bird was trapped inside of a cage. Ichabod would later reference this too when he was an adult, spinning the, again, the bird and cage, appearing as if the two are together. It's a nice touch that this would be a separate perforation. I won't actually pull this out because I want to keep everything in a pristine condition, but it's kind of neat that you can pop these out and use them if you wanted to. Finally, in the inside of the box, you see the multitude, and there's a lot of accessories for Ichabod. He comes with an alternate hairpiece, a ton of different interchangeable hands, and his case. That being said, Spot's going to take a break. I'm going to get this opened up, and when we come back, we're going to get a better look at the Hot Toys Sleepy Hollow Ichabod Crane 1-6 scale collectible figure. There's more heading your way, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Just before we have a look at Ichabod Crane, of course, the first thing we're going to have a look at is the standard Hot Toys display stand that comes included with the figure. On the top, we've got Sleepy Hollow. The front placard gives us Ichabod Crane. Nothing overly complex, nothing overly busy with the display stand, and that's perfectly fine with me. Sometimes if you get an overly busy display stand or one that takes up a lot of space, uh, you can find that your display cases or cabinets that you have these displayed in can take and fill up very quickly. So I'm okay with these little smaller display stands. I will probably mention this on a couple of occasions too, but having Ichabod Crane in hand, I really wished that Hot Toys had also produced a Headless Horseman. I feel really as if Ichabod Crane is going to be definitely more a one-shot but uh, a, headless, a Headless Horseman to pit against Ichabod Crane definitely would have been a fun addition. Something else I don't usually touch base on is always the included manuals that come with these six scale figures. I think the Ichabod Crane is a very good example of a figure that you would want to be looking at the instruction guide first just because there's so much involved with the accessories and his briefcase, his medical kit case. Of course, the changing of the goggles, the hairpiece, and other things. You definitely would be looking through this first, I would say, before you start tackling Ichabod. The figure uh, stands, again, at a 12-inch tall height. He's a really good-looking figure. I don't know if I would say I feel like his face looks very accurate to Johnny Depp, or in, that, in this case, Ichabod Crane. It's pretty close, but I do feel like something could be off. Just showing you a close-up look at the face, you'll maybe see what I'm talking about. From certain angles, I think it does a pretty good job of looking like Johnny Depp. I don't know if I would say front-on, it looks a lot like him, but I would think a little bit more from the sides. The hair is good. The hair is sculpted quite nicely. Maybe as one of the nitpicks I could make about the figure is that I feel like his hair could be just a little bigger. And not bigger, like overboard big, but maybe just a little on the messier side, especially for the fact that Ichabod's hair just really seems like a mess at times. Uh, again, like the face is good, I think, but I just feel like it's not, it's not 100% Johnny Depp, I would say. 
Ichabod is meticulously detailed with his costume though. And while I don't feel like maybe his face is 100% spot on, I do think that the jacket, the undercoat, vest, and shirt that he has underneath, I think Hot Toys has really perfected costume. In fact, this is probably some of the best costumes I've seen on a Hot Toys figure. Yes, I know he's not, he doesn't have a lot of wowing color to him. He's basically just all black with a white undershirt, but even like the finest of details, the little gold trim that he's got running down the, the very ends of his jacket, his undercoat, and his vest, I think very well done. He's got more the high ride, almost rider style boots on. And these are plastic as opposed to uh, it being um, like a leather material. It's one of the easiest ways they can get a sculpt in on boots. Uh, if this was fabric, it wouldn't capture it as well as, as a sculpted plastic. And underneath that, let's go ahead and flip around the jacket. Oh, you can also see too, he's got pockets. Now they are only simulated pockets, but they have gold under uh, the gold under layer there, which is a nice touch, but uh, they aren't working pockets. There's not something you can store accessories in if you so wish. And right on the, the cuffs of his sleeves, he's got a little V cuff, but again, also trimmed in that gold. Uh, as for a material, I would say it's probably like, it's almost like a faux crushed black velvet. It's not quite a black velvet, but it's a very, very fine, almost equivalent of a black velvet. It looks quite nice on him. Little small buttons that uh, you may not even have seen just on the back there as well. He's got lots of buttons on the one side. His under jacket also has the buttons and even his vest has buttons. Now these buttons on his vest are less buttons. Let's I'll try not to drop the figure, are less buttons. And instead, instead he's got snaps to close the, uh, the vest. And there's a little section underneath. I'll show you guys how that works in a second. But yeah, overall, his outfit is quite nice. Spot really should have also prefaced this review first by saying there may be some spoilers in there as of course some of the details on the figure are specific to things, elements in the movie. If you haven't seen Sleepy Hollow, I don't know, first of all, why you wouldn't. It's one of, again, my favorite things to watch at Halloween. But I will say that there will be slight bit uh, spoilers perhaps in this review. So fare thee warned. Speaking first about spoilers, or I shouldn't even say potential spoilers, outright spoilers, one nice touch that they've included on the undersides of Ichabod's hands are the punctured marks on his hands. Of course, in the movie, uh, Johnny Depp Ichabod Creighton flashes back a couple of times to when he was a kid and his mother, who he finds inside a, I believe it's an Iron Maiden a torture device, and he, he lunges back or falls back and he lands against, uh, I think it's like a chair of spikes and he gets these little spike permanent uh, indentations on his hands. And not only are these hands have those, those little indentations, but also all the other hands that come included with Ichabod have those as well. That's a nice touch. One of the more memorable scenes in uh, Sleepy Hollow is the autopsy scene, which involves Ichabod changing slightly with his outfit that he's wearing. The good folks over at Hot Toys also includes an apron. And just for the sake of this review, I kept everything sealed as I didn't want to get everything all over the place, especially accessories, because Ichabod will have a lot. Take the cardboard insert out off, and he's got a canvassed uh, apron. So for that, what we want to do is we're going to need to take the jacket off. Go ahead and take the hands off first. I'll we'll just pop those off the sockets. Go ahead and take the other hand off. And we want to remove the jacket. Go ahead and slide it down the wrists. It's best to just kind of start working it over the shoulder area of Ichabod. And then as you get far enough down, you can start pulling from the sleeves. Fairly easy, and you can go ahead and slide this off. Now also too, depending on how you want to display Ichabod, you can display him with the overcoat on, or you can display him with his regular coat too. And I think proportionally, it kind of just, it makes him a little lankier, which I think fits a little bit better the character than his, than his bigger jacket. 
it may be potentially the way I'm going to ultimately display Ichabod. But again, for this, what we want to do is take the other jacket off here. Same idea. You're going to get it over the shoulders, grab the wrist, and pull the pull the sleeves right off. And then from there, go ahead and take the apron, drape it over his head, and you can tie it up from behind. The most memorable aspect of the autopsy scene is also the goggles that uh, Ichabod Crane does sport. And he does come with those goggles as well. The folks over at Hot Toys gives you a pair of goggles that can fit on Ichabod's head. Now to fit them on his head, you're not going to put them on just as such as you see right here. You're going to have to first swap out his hair for a piece that looks like this. It's pretty much the, exactly the same hair, except, of course, it's pushed down on the sides where the, the strap of the goggles would be sitting. Go ahead and take Ichabod's hair, and you want to just pull it up. It's magnetized. Just pull it up. There's the magnet there. Tiny Depp doesn't look quite complete there. Let's go ahead and add the other hair piece. And it sits just over top. It's a little more on the, it doesn't quite look right unless you have the goggles. It just, everything just kind of looks very narrow up here. But then we can go ahead and take the goggles and just drape them over his head like that. And there is a snap enclosure featured right on the back. In fact, let me see if I can flip it around here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Get that into place. These loop around. And you have to get the threads here lined up just right. Loop these around. Actually, that's not 100% true. It doesn't look like there is a snap, so I've just tied off the back of his goggles. And you get a look that looks like this. Maybe not necessarily the apron, but the goggles, as short of a period of time as they appear in the movie, are so iconic, I might be more inclined to display, I might be more dis, uh, inclined to display Ichabod with the goggles on. I love the steampunk look to the goggles. They just have a real industrial look to them. The lens on the, gl the goggles as well are almost a, a goldish color lens to them, so they're not a complete clear glass. Uh, you can also, much like the movie, take corresponding um, additional uh, lenses, and those can clip right over top here. This can be a little more trouble to get it over top there. You can get them fitted over his goggles. There's that size, and then there's also the very extended scope here and we'll just pop that off and again this takes this you just fit right over top here and snap into place and you get something that looks like that it's a really fun look for Ichabod the goggles also come with a series of different magnifying lenses that you can see actually serve as real functioning magnifying lenses there they range in size some of the larger ones there. And we also have a smaller lens. And to get those going, you're going to take that and clamp it just on the end of the goggles. And you want to make sure you got it facing the right way. I suppose there's not a right or wrong way, but you can get something looking like that. I think it's a neat touch to include something like that. I think what I might even ultimately do too for displaying purposes, I might display Ichabod with his full coat on and also the goggles. Now when I said that he had a multitude of accessories, I was not kidding. Ichabod Crane, for starters, has a medical case. Uh, it feels like it's a faux leather material. And the front closure opens up give you something like this and exactly like in the movie this carriage opens up accordion style 
and there's a little shelf on the inside there that can hold flasks as well as a section on the top. Now, this is where we start getting to a lot of the accessories. Most of the accessories that's, that come include with Ichabod are the vials and jars and powders that come included with the case. Some are a little bit smaller in size. We'll put the case down for a second. Some are a little bit smaller in size, while some of them are a little bit larger with writing. And you get a couple of those. And you get a couple of different jars with corks on the ends there. This will be the equivalent of like bank robber joker. He comes with a lot of accessories and he comes with a bag, but it might be a little harder to get everything in place, especially like the vials. The vials would probably be a serve better to be on the second shelf, but you got to get a little bit of adjusting going around with your finger to get everything in place. And if you have like a smaller pair of tweezers, something that you can do a little bit of, uh, something that might get in there a little easier than your fingers, you might maybe want to consider using that just to get everything into those shelves. To get all his powders, his elixirs and vials of different chemicals in the bag can be an exercise in patience. Patience is what you need in order to get everything in there. I, in fact, actually ended up using some of the tools to try to get everything in there and I ended up having something fall into the bag itself. So, of course, when you're storing this away, you want to make sure that everything is not, you don't want anything lodged in there because that could obstruct pushing down this conveyor and bringing it back up. But what purpose it serves right now, I think it's pretty cool. I will likely have Ichabod dis uh, displayed probably holding the bag, not so much open, and certainly not o having him with the apron. So it's okay that I didn't get 100% right, but just to show you exactly what I'm talking about, that's basically most of the vials. I've missed a few here and there, but uh, you, you do get a lot with them. Some of the other accessories to come included with Ichabod Crane are a series of handmade surgical tools that Ichabod made himself. Some of them are a little more obscure than others. You remember he's got basically a whole table of these. And there's another one. Again, they don't look as if they would serve an actual practical purpose, but somehow he manages. And then we've just got some more standalone hooks and loops. Ichabod also gets himself a musket. And he also gets his book. Again, some spoilers, but this would be the book that he has in his trench coat. Also kind of looks like that is a deflected bullet. The book is nice. You can't open it or anything like that, but not that you would have to. You'd be displaying it in his trench coat. We can take the book, and we had a look at this before. Remember those little strap, uh, little sections here of his jacket? Go ahead and take the book, and the book can slide right into those two, those two loops, just like that. A little harder sometimes to get them through there, but with a little bit of patience, and you slide the book right into place. And we can close that up for safekeeping. Hot Toys gives you six extra interchangeable hands, and hands are ranging from ones ideally suited for holding any of his uh, different medical equipment. He's got a couple of different other hands, again, for holding accessories. And yet again, for holding more accessories. Just different poses, different different degrees of opened and closed hands suitable for how you want to display Ichabod Crane. And if you ever have any problems with your pegs, the folks over at Hot Toys also includes two extra pegs. These come in very handy and actually I've made use of these on several occasions, especially when you're pulling the hands out. I find pulling the hands out sometimes, the pegs come out with them and I struggle to get the pegs back out, I just simply swap them out with the extras that Hot Toys included. 
With Ichabod Crane's articulation, his head is on a ball joint, and not only one ball joint, but he comes with two ball joints, one at the base of the head, which is its own ball joint, but then, with most other Hot Toys, he's got a secondary ball joint at the base of the neck, which allows the head to move quite a bit more up and down, above and beyond the one that's just in, his, in the top of his head. He's got hinges in the arms. They're not overly limited by his jacket. You would think that the jacket would be too tight that you wouldn't be able to move his arms, but they do a pretty good job. It's only when you start moving the arms forward that you find that this fights with you. And don't be afraid before you start moving arms and breaking anything. When you start moving the arm, just kind of start compensating for it in the shoulder area of the arm so you can get more of a bend going. Ichabod also has a double hinged elbow. He has a swivel and hinge in the hand. He has an upper torso crunch and ball joint. Legs hinge forward and back out. Not the least bit hindered, unlike his, uh, his jacket. He has a swivel at the top cut of his thigh. He has a double hinge knee. And finally, despite the fact he's wearing boots, he does still have a swivel point at least at the top of the boot. You won't be able to bend the foot, unfortunately, just because this section here is just a sculpted plastic. Really, at the end of the day, the Sleepy Hollow Ichabod Crane delivers a good, solid entry. I still don't feel it's a 100% look of Johnny Depp. Now, again, I had watched Sleepy Hollow again after picking up this figure, and Johnny Depp does look a lot different then, because he, of course, is younger than he is now, that he does look a little closer to this figure than I initially thought. I still don't think it's 100% of an accurate sculpt, but everything else that you get with this figure more than makes up for it. The fabric on his outfit is fantastic. The multiple different outfit options that you can have with Ichabod is quite spectacular. And I can't really think of a Hot Toys figure that you get as many accessories as what you do here with Ichabod Crane. The vials, yes, can be a little more of a trouble to get into the, into the actual shelving here, but I think all of it adds up to a very accurate figure. The only downside though, and I know this is only gonna be a one shot, I don't feel like Hot Toys is gonna be pursuing any more Sleepy Hollow figures. But, oh, I would so love to get myself a Headless Horseman. Have Ichabod and Headless Horseman side by side would be a dream come true. The chances of that happening are probably slim to none. But still, if you're a fan of Sleepy Hollow like I am, I would say definitely worth picking this figure up. Speaking of picking this figure up, Spot ended up picking this figure up from the folks over at Toy NK, uh, a dealer that sells hot toy pieces. If you guys are interested in checking out some of the pieces that they have available, including Ichabod, you can click the link down below and uh, have a look at their website. Today's collectible spot, we were having a look at the Hot Toys Sleepy Hollow Ichabod Crane one six scale collectible figure. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more collectible spots heading your way. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.